you wanna get better results from your content strategy online? If you're using HubSpot, HubSpot topic clusters may be the way to do just that. I'm gonna show you how in this video. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. HubSpot topic clusters have everybody buzzing because they're much different than the old way of using keywords to drive your content strategy in individual blog posts. Now, you're still gonna need to use keywords inside of your content strategy, but let's talk about the reason why topic clusters have everybody buzzing and what's so different about it. On the screen, I have topic clusters in the model from HubSpot. You've got these triangles and these uh, rectangles and polygons, and then you've got this giant circle in the middle. So what are we looking at? So HubSpot topic clusters are a way to bring all the content together that showcase an individual topic or an, um, that you're an authority in that topic supported by subtopics or that's what we would call clusters. So in this case, you've got this pillar cluster in the middle or this, excuse me, pillar content in the middle surrounded by these cluster content and then these blue lines indicate hyperlinks. So the content's linked back and forth to each other. Again, links allow search engines to follow uh, the trail to, one, to find out whether or not that content was re related to the previous content. So if we look at the old structure of how this worked with SEO and content, um, a website may have this, uh, we call this you know, your official URL or your root domain. And then we'd have our blog content, and then we'd probably write about specific topics. So if you, you know, wrote content, let's say even five or six years ago, this is probably the way that you approached content. So you, in this case, this is an example from HubSpot. They would write about marketing, agency stuff, sales related content, and then each of these um, uh, triangles or shapes or whatever under here would represent an individual topic that they had researched and wrote about. So in that case, it might be things like they would have written inbound marketing techniques, inbound marketing versus outbound marketing. These would have all been individual blog posts. And over time, as much as you do this, because each, each one of those is a different search phrase or a keyword, and each time you write about those, you now might start to be redundant. And we all know that um, Google penalizes duplicate content, and if it's too similar, it's not going to help us rank long-term. So the new structure, this diagram here suggests, okay, this is now still your root domain, but instead of having um, those individual pieces scattered out throughout your website, you've now formed these clusters around topics. So in this case, the topic here might be inbound marketing. And these are all of the subtopics or the clusters or the topic clusters. Again, uh, if you're watching this video, that's probably what you're looking for, that word. But these are the topic clusters that you would be writing about. So again, it's, it's less about keywords. I want you to start thinking more about topics you want to own, not just keywords. Because when you own a topic, it allows you to use HubSpot's terms, exert your sphere of influence, or establish yourself as an authority on those topics. So in the case of HubSpot Hacks, which is this channel that you're watching right now, um, we have you know the need to write about HubSpot-related content. So if we wrote about HubSpot CRM, um, the phrase HubSpot CRM would be our master pillar or the topic that we want to own. And then as we do our keyword research here inside of SEMrush is an example, this is the tool that we prefer to use for keyword research. Um, you can use also other tools are wonderful. Um, Ahrefs is an excellent uh, uh, tool as well. Um, there is also some keyword data inside of the HubSpot SEO tool, which I will show you here just in a second. So again, you wanna select that master topic and you do need to have search volume for that master topic. If you're writing about something that nobody's searching for, it doesn't matter how great your topic is uh, because there isn't any search volume for it. So here we've got all these different ideas of how we can write subtopics that would relate to that master topic. Again, going back to the structure and thinking about how do I write different articles all related to that main topic and how does that um, how is that gonna tell Google that all that content is related? So again, you're, the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to define your content topic or your themes. Uh, the second thing you're gonna do is strategize those subtopics and you can do that with um, using those SEO tools. Another great idea is just to talk to your sales team. What are they asking us questions in sales meetings? What else are people talking about online? What's happening in forums? What's happening on Quora? Or you know, are people having a, a Reddit conversation about this? So then once you've got that down as far as the things that you want to go after, this is where that keyword tool, or excuse me, the SEO tool 
inside of HubSpot, you'll step in and look at that here. So inside this uh, SEO tool, we've got a separate video that talks about the, the really detailed way of setting this up, but I'm gonna show you how this relates to how we're talking about content clusters or topic clusters here, uh, just as a brief overview. So you'll get here by going marketing and you're gonna go to planning and strategy and click on SEO. And that's gonna get you to this screen here. So when I wanna start thinking about putting together my strategy or the topic cluster that I want to have here in HubSpot, I'm going to click on topics and then you'll see we've got a couple established here, but I'm gonna click on add a topic. So let's use that HubSpot CRM as an example to set up our topic cluster inside of HubSpot. So I'm gonna type in HubSpot CRM and click add. So you can see, as I mentioned before, that you will get an estimation of monthly search volume inside of this SEO tool. So again, if you are just new to this um, pillar uh, cluster model or the topic clusters, and you don't wanna go out and use a third party tool like SEMrush or Ahrefs, you could actually use this here in HubSpot. Um, it doesn't, it makes it a little more challenging to do some of the research, but again, that aside, you have what you need inside of this SEO tool. So to actually set this up and say, yes, check mark, I want this to be my topic. I'm going to click on this box here and then create topic. So then it's gonna give you the visual illustration of that that we just looked at. So does this look familiar? Because it should. So this is the illustration that we talked about for the model and then this is what it looks like inside of that SEO tool. So. It, when you're just getting started with this SEO tool, what you wanna do is you actually wanna plan your topics first, and then you can go back and link the content you already have inside of this SEO tool. Now, inside the SEO tool is where you link the content to the model. You still have to go to your individual pages inside of HubSpot to link the content back and forth, but I will show you that here in just a second. So let's say I've got this here as my main uh, topic, again, my pillar topic and then I want those topic clusters that surround that main topic, so I'm going to establish those here. Now, if you haven't already determined those and they're not already written down or created somewhere in a spreadsheet, you can actually do that right here inside the tool. So again, I'm going to go with some of those ideas from that SEMrush report, and I'm gonna go HubSpot CRM demo, and I'll click that here. Great, I've got 90 in, uh, monthly searches. That works out well here and then it's going to automatically suggest content that I already have inside of HubSpot on my blog that would relate to that keyword. So this is great if you've already written with that keyword in mind. In this case, basics of SEO strategy is if you're writing about a search term or, or a keyword, when someone types the word HubSpot CRM demo into Google, they expect to see a demo of the HubSpot CRM, which means they probably wanna look inside, they probably wanna know the ins and outs. So if you, don't, you haven't written an article that's already optimized for that search, don't assume that you're already done because you have a lot more work to do. So if I wanted to add more topics here, then I can add a, a keyword. Let's say I'm gonna do HubSpot versus Salesforce. That's an excellent search. And again, I would have gotten that had I gone over here and looked at some of those keyword suggestions from SEMrush. So I've got HubSpot uh, versus Salesforce. And uh, for some reason, that one, oh, it's because I put the VS period. So in this case, this helped me realize that I need to make sure that I don't use that VS period. And it said just uh, versus with VS. So I'm gonna click save. Okay, so again, it's gonna assume, oh, here's some content. Again, we haven't written specifically for that search term, so I'm not going to link any of that content. So you keep doing this until you've got that filled out, and then this becomes your content strategy, and it guides your editorial calendar, and you can use this to communicate your um, uh, progress on the content cluster, or the pillar content cluster, to your team. Now, if you actually have content already created, again, I would go in and I'd attach that URL and I can make sure that I um, have that marked in here. So I'll show you one that we already have set up so you can see what that looks like. So we've got a content cluster already um, of video marketing. So our video marketing guide is this, how to use video to market your business. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like and we're gonna go visit that specific um, uh, pillar page so you can see that. So let's type in video marketing guide. Now, right now we're in the blog area, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like. We'll view it. 
All right, so video marketing guide, how to use video to market your business. So when we wrote this, we were looking at owning the topic of video marketing. I wrote this again about a year and a half ago, and um, or actually it looks like two years now, um, because it was a very hot topic at the time, and it still is. So as you go down this page, you'll see that we've got a lot to cover in this overhead or comprehensive overview. We've got how, why is video important, how to add video into your strategy, how to establish goals for your video marketing, how to actually create the content itself, and then how to do the right call to action, and then eventually we've got metrics and promotions. So this is a very comprehensive overview, but I'm going to have subtopics inside of there. So we've got uh, video and email, building rapport, we've got video marketing software. All these topics are subtopics or sub searches that would be related to that main master content. And then if I click on this, you can see I've got this subtopic here and it's linked to our pillar page. And then we've got additional search queries. So again, this is how you're going to do the linking inside the SEO tool. If I brought this page up and I didn't have a link to a new piece of content that I had written. So let's say that for the sake of example here, I wrote a new article called how to do video marketing on, um, you know, Snapchat or how to do video marketing on TikTok. So if that's the case and I have another blog and from this pillar page, I want to make sure they know that um, I would find the place in the article that makes sense. I would hyperlink it. And then just like you link content inside of HubSpot, I would go ahead and link um, and I can select um, which uh, page I want it to link to, and then you can find what page is on your website. So we're not going to do that, and we're going to exit. We don't have any changes. Wonderful. Okay, so that is the pillar cluster model. Again, revisit this diagram here because I want you to think about the topic clusters that you can own because I know you're authority in something, but we have to talk about things in the way that the customers are looking for them. And then we have to set up our content in a way that shows Google that all of these things are related and there are some intricacies there just to make sure you get it down. Uh, using that SEO tool inside of HubSpot will help you think about it and tie it all together. That's all for today. If you have any questions about this HubSpot topic clusters or the pillar cluster model, drop the comments below. We'd be happy to answer those and we can address any future questions in a future video. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button and we will see you next week.